Imagine having a coding assistant that intuitively understands your needs, anticipates your next move, and helps you write code faster and wiser. Welcome to the future of programming with GitHub Copilot. In this comprehensive video, you will unlock the full potential of this revolutionary AI tool, transforming the way you code. Through this video, you will understand GitHub Copilot platform, what IDEs are integrated, and we will show various demos for SQL to get Copilot work for you smartly. Also, by the end of the video, you will be a master of using GitHub Copilot. We have added the chapters in the description for your reference so that you can also skip to your interested section. We'll begin with the foundational understanding of Git and GitHub. From there, we'll explore the wide range of languages and IDEs supported by GitHub Copilot, revealing its versatility. Installation is a breeze, and I'll guide you through it step by step. However, this is just the start. You'll witness GitHub Copilot in action with practical examples in SQL, illustrating how it can streamline your development process. We'll delve into the integration of ChatGPT with Visual Studio Code, enriching your coding experience with this interactive AI-powered assistant. Join me on this journey to master GitHub Copilot and revolutionize the way you write code. So let's get started and unlock the power of GitHub Copilot together. Hello everyone. Welcome to this course, Getting Started with GitHub Copilot. In this course, we are going to talk about the new buzzword that is GitHub Copilot. So what exactly we are going to talk here? Let me tell you that first. So I'll be talking about what is Git and what is GitHub. Because before knowing what is GitHub Copilot, you need to understand what is Git and what is GitHub. But again, as Copilot is based on a artificial intelligence concept, you need to know what is generative AI and also what is this open AI. Because whenever we talk about GitHub Copilot, open AI is a word which is always associated with that. So to understand GitHub Copilot, we need to know what is this open AI. So I'll talk about that as well. Going ahead, we'll talk about how to install GitHub Copilot on our laptops and then how to integrate that with one of the IDE that is Visual Studio Code. And then I'll also show you some hands-on sessions with SQL queries. And then also how GitHub Copilot is going to help you run a MySQL query that also we are going to understand. Lastly, I'll also talk about how to generate unit test for a given code. Because without performing a testing of your code, you cannot create a full-fledged software or a project. Now let us understand what is GitHub, because I'm going to talk about GitHub Copilot. So you should understand first GitHub. Many of you would be familiar with what is GitHub, might be using it also on a day-to-day -day basis. Whoever is a, are developers or a software coders, they might be using it for sure. But again, you need to understand exactly what GitHub is to understand GitHub Copilot. Before understanding GitHub, you need to understand what is Git. Because you know GitHub is based on the foundation of Git concepts. So Git stands for Global Information Tracker. So Git was initially developed to do version control system, and it's a distributed architecture. Version control system meaning, suppose you have developed a software or a project. Now, that was the initial version. Now you did some updation, you know, some functionalities were added or maybe removed, and the next version of the software is created. So somewhere, the older version should also be stored right, should be worked upon, and then the newer version should be installed. So how or where you can do all these? Git provides that platform. Okay, so it's a distributed version control system where you can keep your code, that is, you can store your code, you can manage it, you can modify it, update it, and release the newer version of it. Initially, Git was created by Linus Torvalds, the creator of Linux operating system kernel as well, and this was created, founded in 2005. Now, I'll talk about some functionalities of Git. These functionalities are also carried forward to the GitHub concepts. That's why it's important to understand this here as well. So Git has a distributed architecture. It means what? That So there is an architecture where, you know, it's called centralized architecture, where you, you know, suppose you've written a software code and it is stored at one place, you are able to access it on a day-to-day -day basis. But distributed architecture meaning it is stored at a place, but every developer's machine or a laptop is able to access it or keep it a copy of it on their own laptop as well. Okay, so that's your distributed architecture provided by Git. Second, it helps you run a parallel version. Now suppose that two, three developers are working on the same piece of code you know, or same software or project. 
and they're using Git to store that software or a project. All three developers can run or do the modification of that code in their local machine and keep on doing the updations parallelly. So the same code will have three different versions on three different developers' computer. Parallelly, it is maintaining all these versions so that the three developers can work independently on their machine for the same piece of code. Next, it maintains history. So all the metadata related to, uh, you know, modification or updation of a code, like who updated the code, what was the changes done, when was it done, all these metadata is being is also being maintained uh, on Git platform. That's what it is that maintains history. Next is collaboration and conflict resolution. So how is this, you know, doing conflict resolution? So same piece of code, as I said in an example, that three developers are, you know, accessing it and updating it. Right now, suppose all three did the modification in the exact same piece of code. Which code will be stored back, uh, you know, in the original copy? How to resolve this conflict is also handled by Git. You know, there are different logics behind which uh, just uh, used to take care of all these uh, conflict resolution things. Next, the coming to performance wise, Git is fast and secure. I said fast because, you know, it provides a uh, you know, person to access it on their own machine and that's how, uh, you know, it is faster. And Git is faster because it can handle even large code base. Even if your code file is very large, you can efficiently handle it and it's also secure. It's open source means it is freely available. So not just, you know, GitHub is freely access. Git is freely accessible, but also you can uh, access the code or manage your project Freely, there is no uh, subscription charges as such. Then integration. Git can be integrated with various IDEs. It can be integrated with various online platforms like GitHub. So here GitHub comes in picture. So GitHub is an online platform or I can say a web-based platform for Git. So all these functionalities which I just now listed down for Git is applicable to GitHub as well. And apart from this, GitHub offers some more functionality, some more features as it is a web-based platform and uh, it provides version control for various systems. Now, coming to what is GitHub Copilot. So you want an idea what is Git, what is GitHub, talking about GitHub Copilot now. So as GitHub, a web-based, you know, uh, version control system, which was already allowing you to store your projects, your software codes, basically, and access them also freely. So associating, you know, Copilot with GitHub would have been beneficial because a lot of training data is freely available. When I say freely, it is open source. It is freely available to train the model. So as I said, GitHub Copilot is a AI developer tool. So it is an artificial intelligence based developer tool. So the programmers, the software coders, or the developers are going to use this GitHub Copilot to write down a code to create a software. It is based on generative AI model, which I spoke about, and it is developed by GitHub, OpenAI, and Microsoft. As I said, initially it was founded by GitHub and OpenAI, but as Microsoft is one of the investors here, the name is associated in the founders, okay? Talking about some of the features of GitHub Copilot, the first one is it provides sharp and intelligent code suggestion. Meaning, when you use GitHub Copilot, the moment you start writing code, it will help you to, you know, suggest you the next line of code or the next few words of that code. For example, suppose you're writing a for loop, okay? So for loop, if you write just the for keyword, it will automatically give you the brackets, the, you know, what has to be written inside that bracket, those curly brackets and everything. Now, this example, I've taken it from Java. If it is a Python code, it will suggest you accordingly. Or it is any programming language code, it will suggest you accordingly. Okay. Next feature is it auto completes the code. Now, why the software developers are loving this GitHub Copilot? Because for Talking about, you know, Java uh, programming language, like I am a Java programmer. So when it comes to Java programming, there are so many, you know, syntaxes which has to be keep in mind. That is semicolons, the curly brackets, uh, you know, the round brackets. So where curly brackets will be there, where round brackets will be there. Should I put a semicolon at the end of for loop or should I put it after curly brackets? Uh, there is no semicolon required. So these kind of lot of small, small things are there which has to be kept in mind. 
I'm very sure that other programming languages are also having these kind of syntaxes which has to be learned. But if you're using GitHub Copilot, you need not learn those or you need not Google every time after writing a single piece of code. Because GitHub Copilot will automatically complete your code with the right syntax of the same programming language in which you are developing your software or writing a program. It codes faster. Now, why does it codes faster? Because as I said, the if you're writing just the first few words of the program or first few you know, uh, keywords of the programming language, it is going to suggest you what should be the next few lines. And you just have to you know press a tab or enter and it will uh, write down the code in a fraction of a second. So, that's the reason it codes faster. So it understands all the file types. If you have created a file, you're using GitHub Copilot there, and you've created a file with .py extension, it understands that it's a Python code file. If you have created it with .java extension, it will understand that it is a Java code file. Right? Similarly for other programming languages, and it will suggest you the code or the next few lines of your program on the basis of the programming language or the file type which you have stored uh, that file off. Okay, so that's the uh, you know feature that it understands file type. Next, cloud code understanding. So not just you know the basic programming concepts; it also has concepts of cloud. Uh, suppose you're writing or developing a software that uses a cloud platforms that may be using any cloud-based platforms. It will suggest you according to that the next lines of code. Okay, it also has database understanding. May it be any database, MySQL, uh, Oracle, SQL. Uh, PostgreSQL or uh, no, uh, MongoDB, depending upon which database you're using, it will suggest you, or I can say it will help you write the query in that particular uh, database programming language. IDE integrations, it can be integrated with a lot of IDEs, integrated development environments. Lastly, but not the least, it gives you the best suggestion. As this you know, GitHub Copilot is based on AI uh, you know, generative model, and this model is trained on a lot of freely available codes, that is open source available codes. And hence, it provides you the best suggestion possible for that particular piece of uh, you know, code which you are trying to write or a program which you are trying to write. There are you know, disadvantages to it as well. About that, I'll talk in a little bit of time. But this is all about the features of GitHub Copilot. So what all you can do with the help of this? Okay, you will get a more clear understanding of this once uh, we'll see the demo or a hands-on session that how exactly is, you know, it is auto-completing the code which you're trying to write or how is it understanding even what is there in your thoughts. So let me be very clear here that it will not read your thoughts, what's going on in your mind, but yeah, what you are trying to write from the keywords which you have already written on the GitHub Copilot platform, it will help you to write the complete software. Now let us talk about what are the languages and IDEs that are supported by GitHub Copilot. Before getting started with hands-on sessions of GitHub Copilot, you need to know what programming languages you can use on GitHub Copilot. So the list is infinite, although not limited to this. Python, JavaScript, TypeScript, Java, C Sharp, C++, Go, Ruby, PHP, and many others. As I said, the list is not limited to just these programming languages. Some might be added more or it can add in the future. Initially, uh, the language on which you know GitHub Copilot was developed and the first test was done was JavaScript. So uh, later on you will see that you know with JavaScript programming language you can utilize all the features of GitHub Copilot. When I say all, all the features of GitHub Copilot, meaning different versions are there or different you know subparts are there for GitHub Copilot tool, which you can uh, fully utilize when it comes to JavaScript programming language. But yeah, other languages are also supported. So this, this is the list which you can go through and depending upon the programming language you want to work upon, you can choose GitHub Copilot. Talking about the IDE supported by a GitHub Copilot. So from the official announcement on the GitHub Copilot website basically, you can see that it mentions that GitHub Copilot integrates directly into your editor, including NeoVim, JetBrains IDE, Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code, right? So these are the four IDEs, integrated development environments on which you can use GitHub Copilot. I will be using Visual Studio Code to demonstrate you uh, the codes and also the SQL queries. But why I have selected this? 
So there is no, you know, uh, such strong reason. But yeah, initially when the GitHub Copilot was developed, it was tested and developed on Visual Studio Code. And as you know, the first always gains a preference. So that's the reason I'm using Visual Studio Code. And also as this, uh, you know, GitHub Copilot was developed using this tool initially, it will be fully fledged supported or seamlessly supported by Visual Studio Code. And that's the reason I'll be using Visual Studio Code going further for demonstrating the hands-on session. Let's talk about the advantages and disadvantages as well. I have spoken a lot about advantages, right? Like, you know, it helps you to develop uh, and write faster code because you don't have to, you know, now keep remembering the small, small syntaxes or small, small keywords of the programming language. GitHub Copilot can suggest you what should be the next keyword here or what is the advanced syntax which you are missing here. Uh, why is your code even giving an error that also can be pointed out by GitHub Copilot. So all using all these features, you are able to write the code really quick, right? Even if suppose in the comment, uh, just as a comment of any programming language, you write uh, you know, what uh, application you're trying to develop, it will co give you a basic code or basic idea. Suppose you want to write a program for linear search. You just write in a comment program of a linear search. And within a fraction of seconds, it is going to demonstrate to you or give you the code snippet for a linear search, right? If you want to develop a GUI, you want to create a graphical user interface with suppose two text boxes, two buttons, two labels, right? Just, just write down this as a comment. It will give you the basic, uh, or I can say it will give you the complete code of what GUI you want to develop. That might need some customization depending upon what exactly the GUI you want to look like. But yeah, it will help you to write down the basic at least, right? But there's a disadvantage to this as well. As I said, First thing is that, you know, GitHub Copilot is not going to read your mind. It's not inside your brains. So definitely you have to give a proper prompt. You have to properly write on the comment what you exactly want GitHub Copilot to help you with, right? And as it is trained on the freely available programs, it might give you incorrect results sometimes, right? Suppose I said, uh, I want to write a program for searching an element in an array, okay? And to search an element in an array, GitHub Copilot has suggested you a, a logic, which is somewhat like linear search, but you wanted to write binary search. So right, there's an ambiguity here, correct? Suppose you wanted to create a GUI, uh, as I gave an example right now, and there you want uh, two text boxes and two buttons. It provided you the text box, but it didn't provide you the label, right? So text box should be associated with the label. What exactly has to be entered into the text box is provided as a label, right? So these kind of incorrect results might be produced by GitHub Copilot. So it's not exactly incorrect, but it's incorrect when it comes to the reference of what exactly you wanted to write code with or code for, right? So uh, you have to be a little bit of intelligent programmer in software. So you need to have a understanding or a knowledge of the software programming language to just check and review that whatever, you know, code suggestions are given by GitHub Copilot, is it right or wrong? So that's is the smaller disadvantage. But yeah, as I said, if you have knowledge of it, you might not uh, you know, be affected with this disadvantage and convert this disadvantage to your advantage. Now let us see some hands-on session for the different aspects of GitHub Copilot, starting from the installation and also executing MySQL queries. So let's get started with how to install GitHub Copilot and in the process, I'll also tell you how to, uh, you know, integrate it with Visual Studio Code. So just go on Google and there you can write GitHub Copilot, okay? And once you press enter, the very first link, if you see here, GitHub Copilot, your AI pair programmer, you have to click on this, okay? And then the link opens up. This is the link here, right? Now. You can see all the details about, uh, you know, uh, GitHub Copilot is over here. You can see here the .ts file, how the GitHub Copilot is helping. A small, uh, you know, GIF is here, where in, as a comment, uh, the developer writes that determine whether the sentiment of text is positive, use a web service, and it automatically generates this code 
within a fraction of second. Similarly, you can see with the Go programming language or Python or uh, you know Ruby or whatever programming language you are comfortable in working or you want to develop a software, the same uh, thing applies. Coming to the different plans which are available from GitHub Copilot. So one is that you can use a one month free trial. So to give it a try, you can go with a free trial and that's what I'm going to do it right now here. So you can click here, start a free trial and it will give you a one month free trial which you can utilize or there are two different plans. One is for individual, one is for business. So depending upon your account, your GitHub account, if it is an individual account or it's for corporate account, you can uh, you know, leverage this uh, benefits. So for individual, this is the plan per month or this much is per year. For business, similarly, the other plans are there. You can go with buying it. Trust me, guys, you're not going to, uh, you know, disappoint if you are taking these plans for an individual and trying to use it. I'll show you also how, uh, you know, it is helping in writing a software. Then maybe you can get a clear idea that I should go with the plan or not. Uh, similarly, you can see or go through this complete page. It also uh, tells you here uh, down the lane that, you know, uh, how uh, it is helping the developers in, in the entire world. The research has found GitHub Copilot helped developers code faster, focus on solving bigger problems, stay in the flow longer, and feel more fulfilled with their work. So this is some data, research data, which has been put up over here. And similarly, uh, down you can see somewhere, it is also mentioned which all, uh, you know, yeah. So you can see uh, uh, it writes the program for if, for if you want to draw a scatter plot in JavaScript. This is how quick it is writing down. So you can see just with a blink of an eye, it has written the complete code. You can go with Python and how to write drawing a scatter plot in Python just within seconds. It's sim similarly, you can go for, you know, other program related to uh, memoization or you can fetch tweets or I mean, writing the program for fetching the tweets can be written within fraction of seconds. Right. So this is uh, an example how Copilot is helping you write code better. Now coming to how to install it. So as I said, you have to click on GitHub Copilot link. That is the very first link when you type GitHub Copilot in Google. And here you can click on start a free trial. So if you click on this, it will take you to the login page of GitHub. So uh, you can see here that it is already logged in. So uh, my account, this is Pragya Prudent here. If you are not logged in, so or for the first time you're using it, maybe you have logged out, it will ask you to log in else you can, uh, if I go back to that page, as I said, if you click here, or you can just before itself, you can sign in from here. So as I've already signed in, it's showing my, you know, profile icon here. But if you have not, it will click, uh, it will show you the option to sign in or sign up. Okay. So I'll go back again there, clicking on a start a free trial. And as I have not yet taken any plan or I'm not using the account which has plan associated. So this is the free version which I'm using right now to demonstrate you. And in this, if you can go here and see, there's option of billing, yeah, here, billing and plan. So if you go on this, plans and uses. So you can see right now it is saying it's due by September 8, because recently I've taken the free trial version. Uh, if you want to buy it right now itself, you can go here uh, and do the upgradation. And you can see what benefits are there and what is not included. So these are many things are uh, supported or right now in my GitHub Copilot you know, account. So you can see GitHub Copilot, it is there with the GitHub. Now, how to link it with Visual Studio Code. So I'm going to use an ID, Visual Studio Code. You can use all uh, the other IDs also, which I have mentioned to you, which GitHub Copilot supports. And the reason using I'm using GitHub Copilot uh, with Visual Studio Code is that because that was the platform and ID on which GitHub Copilot concept was initially developed. So for that, you should either have Visual Studio installed in your laptop or system if not, then again, you can take help of Google and you can just directly type here Visual Studio Code and the very first link here, you can click on this. It will take you to the page of uh, Visual Code Studio. You can go to this download option here and it will show you the option if you are using Windows, Mac, uh, depending upon your Ubuntu or whatever Red Hat, whatever is your operating system, you can download it from here. So if you click on Windows here, uh, it will uh, download. You see, thanks for downloading Visual Studio Code for Windows. Uh, actually, I have already downloaded and installed the uh, 
IDE. So I need not install it again, but uh, guys, it's very simple. So you can, once it downloads, so it's still downloading. So once it downloads, you have to just click on it, uh, click on I accept the terms and services, and just clicking on next, 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 it is going to install it, right? So it will take maybe two to three minutes hardly to install once it gets downloaded. Now, point is how to connect Visual Studio Code with uh, GitHub Copilot. So let me show you that. As I said, I have already uh, installed Visual Studio Code. So here is the terminal for it. So once you install it and open Visual Studio Code, you will see it like this, like, uh, something of this kind of a screen will come in front of you. So I have also created a project folder here and, and a file. Uh, that's the reason it's showing it. But if you have not and you have open VS Code for the first time, this, these options won't be here. You have to create a folder and a file separately later on, okay? So you can actually go from here, create a new file, or you can open some folder. And then inside that, you can create a file. So these options are here, which you can do. But before that, how to integrate now GitHub Copilot with VS Code? So for that, you have to go to uh, this extensions option. Okay, that's also the marketplace. So here you have to search the extensions in the marketplace. So I'll just write GitHub Copilot. Okay. Now again, GitHub Copilot has various versions. Okay. So GitHub Copilot, GitHub Copilot Labs, GitHub Copilot uh, Night, different versions are there, which has different features. Uh, and also some are used for different activities, different kinds of, you know, activities related to software uh, development. Depending upon your use, you can, but here I'm going to just show you the very first basic version of it, that is GitHub Copilot. So once you write there, the very first option, which you see with a you know, tiny bear kind of an icon, you can uh, click on this. So once you click here, like as I have already installed it for a faster demonstration here, but if you have not in place of this uninstall, it will ask you to install. So just have to click that install uh, you know, option. You know, these reload required disable option would be there. There will be only one option given to you here, install, okay, for the first time if you have not installed. Click on that. It will install here itself with a fraction of a second. It won't take you to any other page or anywhere. It will just simply install. And then it is going to pop up asking to authorize VS Code by GitHub to use GitHub Copilot, right? So authorization from GitHub is required. So if it doesn't automatically pops up, then in the notification center, you can click here and Definitely here, there will be a notification saying, kindly authorize GitHub Copilot to be used in VS Code. Okay, so you have to just click on that notification. It will take you back to, to your GitHub account and it will ask you here to, uh, you know, it will pop up message here saying that our editor VS Code is trying to access GitHub account. So you have to allow it and authorize it. So you have to click on authorize button and that's it. It will link there. And once the link is completed, here you can see uh, this small icon here. So this is the icon for Copilot, okay, GitHub Copilot. So once this is active here, if it is not installed properly, it's not active, then there will be uh, this icon with a, you know, a cut mark over it, like a slash on top of this bear icon. It means it's inactive right now. If you want to inactivate you know, or deactivate, you don't want to use it right now, you can click on this. And then you can click on disable globally. So disable globally is for disabling it for all the programming languages which you are using on this VS code. If I'm using some programming language, suppose Java, then it will ask you that want to disable for only Java, okay? So depending if you want to disable it for some time or you are finding it irritating, you can disable it as well, but good to use it. Fine, so this is done. So you have to just close it. And if you are using if you have to run Java codes here, so VS Code supports Java programs, right? So you just have to install the JDK uh, in your machine. So make sure that JDK is installed. If not, you can again uh, install the JDK or the extension for Java from here and uh, install it in the same way how I explained you for GitHub Copilot. So you are able to run Java programs also properly. Now, coming to Already I have, okay, so once you have installed Java, you have you know, uh, installed the plugin of GitHub Copilot, you can go ahead with creating a folder here, or you can open a folder if you've already created, or it's there in your uh, you know system. And then in this, you can create a new file. You know, I can give it a name. Suppose, uh, you know, first program dot Java. 
okay so just click into uh, you can select the folder so it's already selected vs code folder is there and java project folder i have already created so you can just uh, create the file so it created you know the file first program dot java right so you can see j here so it's a java file right so that was all about your installing github copilot installing vs code integrating github copilot with vs code now let us see how we can use github copilot with mysql in visual studio code right now moving ahead to mysql so what we should do here is that uh, you have to first install the plugin related to mysql in your vs code and that you can do in a very few simple steps that you can just go to the marketplace you know installing extension position and here in the search you can write uh, mysql okay and here the second one this you know if you see here this two uh, this database icon uh, you have to click on this and install it as i have already installed again it's showing me uninstall option otherwise it will show you install option here just click on it it will install you without asking you any accept reject or next option it will simply install here so mysql once it is installed so these icons if you see are on the left side database no sql uh, you know these will not be until you have installed mysql so once you have installed these icons will be visible to you so if you click on these icons which is visible here so if you click on database uh, right now i have already connected it to with the database so it's not asking me any, any option to connect but for the first time when you are uh, you know integrating mysql with vs code it is going to a pop up window will be here where you have to fill the connection name okay and now what is that connection name and password which I, i'll tell you so let me open mysql for that so you can see here i've, I've opened mysql workbench which was already installed on my laptop. So you make sure that you have MySQL Workbench already installed, you know, already uh, logged in. So you can see here two connections are there, local instance MySQL AT and then Fragya by my name, I've created a connection. You can create a new connection from here. And then if you click on this, uh, you will be prompted to enter a password, right? So you can keep whatever password you want. Uh, now here, when I come to Visual Studio, here, when you will click for the first time this database part, it is going to ask you to connect this VS code to the database MySQL connection here. Okay, this one. So to connect, what you have to do, you have to fill few details. As that pop-up window is not displaying here because I've already connected, I'll just tell you what details you have to enter. You have to enter the connection name there and the password. Apart from that, you need not change any field there. Okay, need not alter anything and just click on connect. So once you click on connect, all the database which you have created in that particular connection on MySQL Workbench will be shown over here. Okay. If you want to create a new, uh, you know, database, you can click on this plus icon and create new database. You, if you want to, you know, select any one of the database. Suppose I have selected this employees database. Okay. So these are the tables which I already have in my database, right? So I can use any of these. So you can see customers, employees, office. These are the tables. If I want to see what, uh, you know, uh, this customer table is all about, you can click on this dot and it will show you. So you can see here employees database. There are few entries here and then there are uh, these are the columns here. Similarly, you can go to the customers and you can see that as well. We're seeing that time to load. So once it loads, it can show. So as you can see here customer name, customer uh, number. Uh, contact last name and all these details are there which has already been created if you want to create new you can do that as well now let me the, our main motive here is to see how uh, you know github copilot is helping us to run mysql queries so for that you can just go here uh, in the query uh, also okay i have already created these two files that's why it's showing here the name or you want to create a new file you can just press Control shift p the shortcut this will be displayed you can click here notebook so you can create uh, or open a notebook so if you open a notebook it will create a new notebook if none is uh, created right so i have clicked on that so you can see this notebook is created here you can write your queries over here as well or the another way is that you can click on this query option and then here you can click on plus icon Right, so this new dialog box will come here. Here you can make 
or write which database you want to use right for example use uh, or you can just write any name here uh, as well the query file name this is basically okay so i can write okay start with so this is just going to create this file and now here you can first you can write the queries now so the first query is i have to specify which database i want to use so i'm going to use here uh, classic models okay now you can see here automatically it is giving me some suggestion so this suggestion here you can see is from github copilot okay but if i want to use well and good if i don't want to use then i can write my own query as well so suppose i want to select i'm writing a simple query to select everything from a, a table okay so select star from so it's showing me some output right but if i don't want to display everything from customer table i want it from employees table so if i write just this it will show me an option right star from employees where last name is something like this but i don't want that also i just want uh, this much now you can execute it you can see here the output right all the data which is there in the employees table is being demonstrated right similarly we can write uh i'll write some complex query here uh, for example let's write a query to join two tables okay so if i write select customer name so you can see here it's showing already customer number customer name so i'll click tab but not select everything from okay from customers is fine where so i have to join two tables right it's not giving me automatically here the suggestion but if i would have written as a comment that i want to join these and these tables it would have definitely given me the uh, suggestion but i want to show you that line by line how on the basis of the prompt or whatever text you have written go to github copilot helps you so where if you write here or uh, let's join the two tables right so it is inner join so i just write inner so you can see now it is giving me the suggestion right inner joins on customer dot customers and orders table automatically it is combining if i want some other table to combine with i can combine write that as well okay let me just now hit enter for this can i can execute okay so it says that the customer number field is ambiguous right so you can see how clear suggestion is there for even the error it means customer number should be either specified from which table i want it to be displayed or i can just remove it for time being okay let's execute the query so you can see it has demonstrated only the customer name if i would have written customers dot customer name it would have de definitely displayed the result now if suppose i want that query for calculating sum of all the orders uh, for each customer or maybe for you can write any query here depending upon what is your requirement so you can see it is i have just written the you know simple english statement and it has demonstrated me the result select customer name sum quantities ordered into price of each as total displaying it as total from customers inner join order on customers dot customer number equals to orders dot order number again it's inner joining with order details because the details of order like the price which we are calculating is there in order detail table now if you want to execute you can execute but you have to delete this line okay because it will throw error so if i execute this you can see here some name of total is being displayed here for each customer what is the quantity order total price for that is being displayed right so you can use aggregate functions you can use inner joins and without spending much of a time you are able to run and execute queries the various complex concepts like sub queries can also be uh, executed with ease if you want to create complex queries like creating a sub query that also github copilot is going to help you with okay i'll give you an example here suppose i want to create a sub query so i'm writing select star from employees where employee number employee number in select so now you can see it is automatically complete that i want to write a sub query it automatically understood right 
So the subquery by default it has written is that select reports two from employees where reports two is null, right? Meaning it's a something like a self uh, join or it's referring to. I'm trying to fetch all those employees details who is reporting to someone from the employee set only. Meaning the reports two is null. Tab and enter, right? And then you can execute it. So you can see it is uh, executing the subquery successfully. So as I said that you need to know the concept, basic concept of any programming language or query language which you are using. And depending upon what you want to write, depending upon the prompts or the text which you have already written, GitHub Copilot is going to suggest you the next line of code or the complete program. We saw the various examples for SQL queries, MySQL queries, and also in as a Java program. Now let us see how we can use chat GPT in Visual Studio Code. And also I'll tell you something about GitHub Copilot Labs. Okay, so we are here at Visual Studio Code window. Now here, if I want to use chat GPT, so till now maybe you would have used chat GPT to get some useful information and the version of uh, no chat GPT which you might have used is three or four. Uh, depending upon if you have a, a valid subscription of it or not. Now, how can you use the functionality of chat GPT here in VS Code? So for that, again, you have to install, you just click on the extensions. And then here you have to click uh, GitHub Copilot chat. Okay. GitHub. You have to write here GitHub Copilot chat. Okay, the very first option, if you see here, you have to install it again. Uh, as I've already installed, it's show, not showing me the option to install it. But if you haven't, you'll be asked to install it first. So install it. Again, you have to authorize this from the, your GitHub account. So once you have installed, you can go to this notification center and you can see that, uh, you know, it is asking here a pop up is there in the notification that you need to authorize this uh, GitHub Copilot chat. And so uh, just to click on that dialog box, which will appear, it will take you to your GitHub account and ask you to authorize there. So just click on authorize from there, right? Sometimes, uh, like when I tried using GitHub Copilot chat, uh, what happens is that it added me to a queue and it said that they'll get back to me and notify on my email when I'm let in to chat, use this chat feature. Okay, so it took around 24 hours uh, for me uh, that they came back uh, sending an email saying that, uh, you know, you have been allowed to use this feature of GitHub Copilot chat. So that might take time for you as well. That's the reason I've already installed and I'm just demonstrating you over here. So once you do this, uh, you know, installation and all the authorization part, you will see this icon over here. Okay, so this icon, this is a chat option. Okay, you have to click this. Earlier, this option won't be here, but once you have installed GitHub Copilot chat, you can see. So here you can ask anything related to the program. Okay. Suppose I want to know uh, what is, or I want to know uh, why is main method used in Java. So just write your question and hit enter. It is just saying that the GitHub Copilot is thinking and then it will write down its answer. Right. The main method is used in Java as the entry point for any Java program. It is a method that is executed when the program is run. The main method is where the program starts executing. This is this. And without a main method, a Java program cannot be run. So this is basically why I have asked is main method used, right? You can ask any, any such question which you don't know. So if you know, want to know what is collections in Java, you can ask. You can write questions related to any programming language. I'm just referring Java here because that's what we have talked about in this course. Okay, so you can see uh, what the collection refers here, what are the different collection classes in Java, all these information is giving. So the chat GPT feature, you can use it in VS Code using GitHub Copilot chat. Okay, now let me also tell you about GitHub Copilot Labs. Okay, so what is GitHub Copilot Lab, first of all? So GitHub Copilot Lab is your laboratory features, meaning if you want to uh, play with your program, the play with a piece of a code. For example, you want to test that code or you want to 
uh, convert that code into some other language like you have written in java you want to convert it into c or if you are not understanding what this piece of code is please explain me so all these kind of you know laboratory activities if you want to do on a piece of code you can do it using github copilot uh, lab but that also is a plugin which you have to install so you have to write here github copilot lab okay so you can see here github copilot labs is the first option which is there you have to click on install again as i've already installed it it's asking me to uninstall so you do click on install done this will also ask you to authorize it from the github account so the same process you need to authorize it and once done this option will be visible here so before this uh, small bear option was only here at the down uh, no taskbar but now it will be visible over here so this is about github copilot lab so you click on the icon so you can see here you know for any piece of code uh you can understand why this is so for example uh suppose i am taking uh the example for the java code which we have written so okay i'll take another example which i have already written here so this is a uh, you know a demo.java file where a program of exception handling is written so public study void main try a5 if a is less than b then it is throwing an exception and then it is handling in catch by just printing a caught keyword right now i want to run lab or use the features of github copilot lab on this code so you can see here the first option is explain so if you want to understand certain piece of code which you are not understanding for example if i put this try catch statement select this okay and so this is automatically displayed here in the explain uh, below explain tab the option is here so you want to explain it uh, the code you want uh what the code does you know uh, so you want to some example based on this code already uh, existing code you want some examples so all these can be done here so if i go to explain code and then you hit on ask copilot it is going to uh, you know explain you so you can see below uh, here's the result the explanation for the code above so each and every keyword and line what is being done will be explained here right you can see here all the explanation is done what this class demo is doing and then you no know, created in which the exception is thrown so the correct explanation is given now language translation so this code is written in java now you want to translate it into some other programming language like i want it to translate into python and i want to ask copilot so you can see here it has uh, you know converted into a python code uh, try catch how is this exception handling done in python correctly it is done right you want to convert it into some other programming language see how many programming languages is there you can do the same but make sure you select only for those where it's possible like you cannot convert a mysql query to a java code right so uh, you know make sure you are intelligent enough there to decide and then there are these uh, brushes you know you can fix bug you can debug your code you can clean or delete certain codes if you want so all these options are there then there is the last option called test generation so you can see here that test generation is currently supported only for javascript and typescript because javascript was the language the very first language on which this uh, you know uh, github copilot was developed and that's the reason it's only right now supported for this but maybe in later future it will come for other programming languages also then you can use test generation so for a given particular piece of code you can just click on this suggest a new test uh, and it will generate a unit test for the given piece of code so this was all about your github copilot lab so we talk about github copilot chat github copilot lab and a basic github copilot how it is helping you to write an intelligent code